Australia, we have one of the highest prevalences of obesity and being overweight in the developed world. And more than that, it is predicted that 80% of us will be obese by the time we get to 2025. In today's episode of Dr. Noor, I take you through everything you need to know about obesity from what causes it, what it is, and what we can do to treat it. With those shocking statistics, it is no surprise that obesity is having such a strain on our healthcare system in the developed world. But what causes obesity and what can be done about it? While obesity is thought to be multifactorial, that means that there's lots of different reasons why someone can be obese. The first reason could be that because, well, food is fast, food is cheap, and it's really tasty. That means that it's full of calories and we're simply consuming more calories than we are expending. And going on from that, we lead a very sedentary lifestyle. Well, most of us lead a very sedentary lifestyle. That means we're sitting at our desks, we're not getting out and about as much, and therefore our scales are slightly tipping over. We're having too much versus expenditure. But we also know that obesity can be genetic in nature. That means that some people just have it in their genes that they might be slightly on the bigger side than, say, their counterparts. Interestingly, what women eat whilst they're pregnant actually has an impact on whether their child or their offspring will be obese in later life. And more so than that, what our infants are eating whilst they're growing up also has an impact on their obesity in later life as well. So obesity starts all the way from the inside tummy to perhaps genetics to even what we're doing in our environment. But what does it mean to be obese and how do we classify whether someone's obese or not? Well, we generally tend to classify obesity by looking at the BMI, which is the body mass index. In order to calculate your BMI, you'll need your weight in kilograms and your height in meters. And you essentially divide your weight in kilograms by your height by meter squared and you'll come up with a number. Now the classifications for those numbers that you get are as follows. So if your number is anywhere between the numbers of 18.5 to 24.9, you're classified as having a normal and healthy BMI. If your number falls between 25 and 29.9, you're classified as being overweight. If your BMI is found to be anywhere from 30 to 34.9, you're classified as being obese class one. And if your BMI is from 35 to 39.9, you're classified as being obese class two. And anything above this is obese class three. So as you can see, it's a simple measure to let you know whether or not you're obese or whether you've got a nice, normal, healthy weight. But we don't just use the BMI because let's talk about situations where, for example, you might have a bodybuilder and he is super muscly and he has literally 1% of body fat on his body, but his BMI is off the scales. This obviously doesn't always work for everybody and it has to be taken into consideration for individual people. So not only do we look at the BMI, but we also look at the waist circumference. Now, this generally is measured by being the midway point between the top of your hip to the bottom of your ribs, which usually falls around the belly button. This number is different for different genders. For example, for women, anywhere between 80 to 88 centimeters is considered normal. And for men, anywhere between 94 to 102 centimeters is considered normal. Anything above these ranges is considered as being overweight. Okay, Dr. Norris, you told me what causes obesity and how it's classified, but why should I care? Well, you should care because it will impact your health significantly. We know that if somebody is obese, there are an increased risk of multitude of chronic health conditions, such as diabetes, stroke, heart attacks, heart failure, kidney problems, liver problems, and the list is endless. So it's really important that if this is you, then you should really, really, really consider trying to lose some weight. And it's even thought that if you have a quite a modest weight loss of about five to 10% of your starting weight, it will have a significant beneficial impact on your health. So you don't have to have much change, but you will definitely reap the rewards if you do lose some weight. And bring up your knees slowly. One and two and three and four and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and 10. And you can really feel sweat starting to burn. Right now we're going to work out why it is that we feel hungry and how we feel full, because a lot of obese people may have troubles with these particular hormone signals. So this is our lovely stomach, which is otherwise located over here. What happens when our stomach is empty? Our stomach releases a hormone or a chemical messenger known as ghrelin. Ghrelin is the hormone that makes us feel hungry. It makes us wanna grab something to eat. It makes us feel like we need to quench that hunger urge that we have. And it signals this to our brain and our brain then goes and forages for food and it then eats the food and starts to consume it. Whilst that is taking place, our gut starts to get activated and it releases another hormone known as GLP-1, which is called glucagon-like peptide 1. Now, this is the hormone that's re released in response to having food and it makes us feel full. It tells our brain, hey, you know what? I'm feeling pretty full right now. I don't think I need to eat any more food. I think I've had enough. 
So at the same time, we have another hormone that is released from the fatty tissue, and that is known as leptin. Leptin has the ability to tell us, you know what, I think I've got enough energy in my body. I don't think I need to eat any more food. It's impact is to try and keep our balance of our energy input and energy output and it is stored in the fatty tissue as I've mentioned. So you might be thinking well if I've got lots of fatty tissue then I must have a lot of leptin which is true but why is it that if I'm obese for example I still feel hungry? Why is it that my leptin isn't working very well and it's still telling me that I need to eat loads of food? Well we know actually that people who are obese and have lots of leptin in their body actually the leptin no longer becomes very sensitive and they actually have something called leptin resistance and so this signal doesn't work as well much like for example a diabetic who doesn't have very good insulin sensitivity and their sugar levels climb up so we know that genuinely there can be an issue with people who are obese and have leptin issues. So as you can see, it's a very complex mechanism of hormones that work to keep us full and hungry at the same time. Now there are a lot of other hormones as well, but I thought we'd keep this science lesson pretty basic and pretty understandable. Now, back to what we can do to help with this. There are plenty of hormones that can impact our ability to feel hungry and our ability to feel full. A lot of treatments will be based around this whole mechanism but as a general practitioner there are a multitude of things that can be done to help to lose weight. The best possible way to lose weight is good old-fashioned diet and exercising as advised by your own general practitioner. Now generally speaking this will be the best way because you'll be able to keep the weight off for longer and it will actually help you to improve your motivation and improve your willingness to lose weight. There are a ton of fads out there and certainly if you just scroll through TikTok or social media you'll see a million and one different ways to lose weight but sometimes these ways just don't simply work or they may be a waste of money or they have some really negative side effects. I'll go on to talking about some other ways that we can lose weight other than diet and exercise but please note that these things are really on advice of your own medical practitioner because there certainly are some pros and certainly lots of cons that can be associated with each of these treatments. One of the first ways that we can encourage patients to lose weight is by giving them a very low energy diet. Now this is usually in combination with seeing a dietitian and a general practitioner to manage you going forward. It's reserved for those people with a high BMI and essentially what it includes is that your, your calorie input will be reduced to under 800 calories per day and rather than having meals you'll be given a special formula to use instead of your meals. And this will cause a very rapid weight loss of about 18 to 20 percent of that person's initial weight in approximately three months time. Now of course you can imagine that this is not suitable for everybody and particularly those people who may have chronic health conditions or who may be pregnant or breastfeeding it certainly isn't for you and of course your own medical doctor will tailor what is good for you and what is not so good for you. So they have the very low energy diet but what else is there on the table? Well we know that there are other pharmacological ways that we can lose weight and I'll briefly touch on these and go through some of the risks and side effects that are associated with these. Now in Australia there are a number of oral tablet medications that can be taken to lose weight but these medications do carry with them a bunch of side effects which quite frankly are not that nice. I've had a number of patients who have had these medications and truly they've stopped them because they just couldn't tolerate the side effects. Now this medication is to be taken every day and it's only used for a period of three months. It's designated for people who have got a BMI of over 27 with a comorbidity, as in they've got another medical condition, or those who have a BMI over 30. The main effect of this medication is that it is an appetite suppressant, that means it stops you from eating lots of food. And generally speaking, however, it does have a number of side effects. It can make people feel quite dizzy, it can make them feel quite sick, it might cause some stomach upset. And some of the real horrible side effects that we really, really, really have to be careful about is that in some patients, it may even cause heart attacks and strokes. So as you can see, although it may sound really glossy and amazing, it does also carry with it some really horrible and serious side effects that you need to be really aware of. And of course, when you speak to your own medical practitioner, they will tell you whether or not this is a suitable medication for yourself. So that is one form of weight loss agent. There are also some other agents that are on the market and certainly some of these have not actually been approved by the TGA or the Therapeutic Goods Administration. That means these medications are being used for something else and generally speaking this tends to be diabetes but as a byproduct or a side effect of that we know that these medications can actually cause weight loss and so they're being prescribed off-label which means that they're not recommended for this but people are giving them for weight loss. Now these medications are injections and you may have heard about these injections on the news, on the TV, literally everywhere you cannot get away from them. But the way that they work is essentially they are GLP-1 agonists so that means that they work like GLP-1 which helps us to 
Remember how we said it actually makes us feel fuller, it makes us feel not hungry anymore, and so hence it causes weight loss. And as you can imagine, these are injections, so you will have to inject yourself either daily for some of them or weekly. Now you might think this sounds amazing, I can do that, I can give myself a little injection here and there, but it's really important to know what the side effects are. The side effects of the injections can actually make you feel um, some, some really severe nausea. And I've had patients who just cannot tolerate these medications because they cause a lot of nausea. Can also cause some stomach upset, as in some diarrhea, and maybe some abdominal pain. In some rarer situations, it can actually cause pancreatitis, which is where the pancreas becomes inflamed. And studies have shown that actually with the weekly injection, when these rats were given this injection, they actually developed thyroid tumors, including thyroid cancers. Now, we don't know for sure if this happens in humans, but certainly if you do have a history of thyroid problems, these medications are a definite no-no for yourself. Certainly, if you are taking these medications and you do develop any worrying symptoms such as abdominal pain, it's so important to go and speak to your medical doctor to avoid anything like pancreatitis because these are really serious side effects. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, whoa, hold up, Dr. Nora, I thought it was just a simple injection with no side effects and it would just make me lose weight and I'll be amazing and glorious. Well, no, guys, it is so important to read the small print and be fully aware of the pros and cons of taking any medication that is prescribed to you. And often I will have patients that come in and they want these injections and they think it's amazing and wonderful. But really, when we go through all of the risks and the side effects, a lot of them say, you know what, I think I'd rather just stick with my diet and exercise. But more of than that is actually at the moment there is a huge shortage of these medications in Australia. So general practitioners really will be hard pressed to actually prescribe these medications for you because we have to prioritise these medications for diabetics because that's essentially their medication. And we don't really prioritise people who have got weight issues uh, with these medications because simply there is a shortage. We're hoping that these medications will become more in stock later next year. But for now, we don't have a huge amount of injections available for you in Australia. But what happens if you tried dieting, you've tried tablets, you've tried injections, you've tried the whole works, what other options are there for you? Well, the next main way of losing weight is to consider surgery. Now, these are invasive procedures that, again, carry their own risks and are only suitable for certain groups of people. In Australia, the three most popular ways of weight loss surgery are as follows. The first one is gastric banding. That means putting a band around the stomach to make it smaller, and so you eat a small amount of food but feel fuller. One of the second popular surgical methods is to have a bypass, a gastric bypass, which means that you make a small pouch in the stomach and the food goes into the stomach, but instead of going around the whole of the stomach, it actually gets diverted straight into the small intestine. So you bypass this whole stomach. And so the impact of that is that you again, you'll have a smaller stomach and you'll feel fuller with smaller amounts of food. And finally, one of the other most popular surgical methods in Australia is to have a sleeve gastrectomy. This means removing a large part of your stomach in entirety. Now, of course, you can imagine that these have their own risks and failure rates as well. And certainly, if you are considering gastric surgery, the gastric surgeon that you go to will provide you with a whole bunch of information, the pros and cons list, and decide whether this is for you. Because in my personal experience, I have had patients who have had such procedures, but unfortunately, after a few years, they've simply reverted back to their previous weight and um, their surgery, unfortunately, has not worked out for them. So there you have it, a full comprehensive review of what obesity is, what causes it, and what treatment options are available. If you yourself suffer from obesity, I would love to hear about what treatments you've done, or what has worked for you, what has not worked. And if you found this video useful and you've got any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care and stay healthy.